None of the things that cause death will be up there in glory. Ain't no COVID-19 up there in glory. Ain't no car accidents in glory. Ain't no drunk drivers taking our loved ones out like that in glory. Ain't no home invasions in glory. Ain't no robins and jackins in glory. Ain't no drugs in glory. There's no drug dealers or drug users in glory. Therefore, there's no shootouts, no gangs, no teen violence in glory. Everything that causes death and murder and suicide in any kind of way has been abolished. Jesus says, I make all things new. Anybody hear me up in here? Oh, death, oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? For death is swallowed up. Somebody need to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. He said, why? Heaven is good. There's no more death. Let's look at John 17, starting at verse 20. First lady, anything else that I'm forgetting? All right. Um, there was a Miss Carol that lost the envelope. A Miss Carol that lost the envelope. Um, she had her tithe in this envelope. And the tide was to Philadelphia. It was cash money. She lost it. And she probably was like, oh, man, the money that was supposed to go to the church is lost. But a child of God was walking through the parking lot. <laughs> and picked up Miss Carol's envelope full of hundreds and twenties and all kinds of stuff. Miss Carol was coming loaded, baby. Miss Carol said, I understand the assignment. I know, Pastor, what you're building around the nation, and I want to be a part of what God is doing. Envelope thick. The child of God didn't take God's envelope. The child of God didn't steal and rob God. The child of God came to the house of God when Miss Carol thought that she had lost her tied half. Though she lost it, God knew exactly where it was, and he, he sent it back to the house of God. And Miss Carol, he did better than you could do. He didn't put it in the box. He put it in the man of God's hand. And I see, hey, I see, Miss Carol. I see, Miss Carol, what you was given. And I pray a million-fold blessing from the mouth of the prophet on your life and on the life of every believer, every giver, every tither, everyone who has offered the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob be upon you and all who have hearts like you. We pray for increase now in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, give God some praise up in this building. Lord, you're mighty. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was an honest child. Oh, Brother John, the honest child was none other than your wife sitting next to you. Hallelujah. Love you, Miss Sarah. Bringing it to the house of the Lord. Love you, woman of God. Thank you, Brother John. Thank you, Brother John. Brother John said, look, we're going to let everybody know. Brother John said, we're going to let everybody know up in here right now. What he said, man, period. Yeah, yeah. Because you got to know who for you. And that family right there, that's... Thank you, Lord John. Hallelujah. Woo! My God, my God, my God. We having church already, and church ain't... Woo, Lord. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. John 17, 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory. Anybody know about the glory? <laughs> and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the, word may, that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them, 
as thou has loved me. And this is our focus verse. Father, I will that they also whom thou has given me be with me where I am. Anybody want to be where he is? Prophetic, huh? Want to be where you are. Anybody want to? He said, God, I pray that woo, those that you've given me be with me where I am. That they may behold my glory. Hey, God, for your glory. Hey, they may behold my glory which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. God, we thank you that you're here already. And we just want to be where you are. We just, we just got to be where you are. So Father, fill this place up with a pure, tangible, powerful portion of your presence, God. We pray that you change us in this place. Show us your glory, God, in this place. <laughs> Teach us your ways in this place. If you have to show us just your back, God. Hide us in the rock of Christ this morning and pass on by, O oh King. But show us your glory this morning, Daddy. Ha. Father, please, as we see your glory, Help us to be conformed and changed to that same glory. Help us this morning to go from glory to glory, faith to faith, strength to strength. Teach us your ways. Our earnest desire this morning is to be where you are in every area of our lives. So save in him sanctifying him and when it's all said and done it'll all be for your glory God in Yahshua Jesus name we pray and the people of God say amen 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 it's all for his glory Deacon John it's all for his glory hallelujah hallelujah I also heard that the evangelism team did wonderful yesterday amen Praise God for your next generation. Amen. Bringing the gospel to the four corners of the earth. Amen. And so we praise God. Hallelujah. For God raising up evangelists and an evangelism team under the leadership of Deacon Bryce and Miss Shalena. It's just an awesome thing. Amen. And so y'all keep doing what y'all doing. Amen. I'm praying. I'm watching. Hallelujah. And I'm loving it. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, y'all, let's get started with the word. First lady, we good. All right, let's get started with the word. Hallelujah. We've been looking at the Lord's Prayer in John 17, and we started a series called Praying Like the Master. And uh, we've been talking about the, the parts of the prayer and what Jesus actually prayed for us about. And he prayed quickly. He prayed that God would keep us. He prayed for our oneness and our unity. He prayed for for joy, that we would have joy. He prayed for our sanctification, which we kind of had been talking about, the purification, him cleaning us up. And then we're moving on and switching gears to something else because Jesus prayed for us to have heaven. Amen, to have heaven. Hallelujah. And so that's what we want to talk about, amen, uh, this morning. And so we're going to be talking about uh, heaven this morning. Amen. And we're coming out of verse 24, if we can look at it. And I'm going to be kind of moving fast. And some would y'all just keep up. Amen. And this message might have to be listened to once or twice, amen. You can get it on the church app. You can get it on YouTube when we put it up. But, but, but this is going to be something special, y'all. It's something special because heaven is a special place, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we're going to get into it. And this part of the prayer is beautiful. Look at 24. He says, he says Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. We have three points this morning. We'll talk about thou hast given me. We'll talk about be where I am. And then lastly, behold my glory. 
All right, behold my glory. And so let's begin just talking about uh, thou has given me. That's our first point. It says, Father, I will that they also whom thou has given me be with me where I am. Now, if we broke that down in the regular English vernacular, going back to the NIV, this is what Jesus is saying. He says, Father, I want those you have given me. It's not everybody. Those you have given me to be with me where I am. Not everybody's going to be with Jesus. Not everybody's going to make it to heaven. Because some people don't want heaven. And some people don't want to be with Jesus. And you can tell they don't want to be with Jesus because they don't want to be with Jesus now. Anybody hear me up in here? So heaven wouldn't be where they want to be. God only wants the people that want to be with him. Anybody hear me up in here? That's why it's important to want to be with him now. And so he says, he says, Father, I want those you have given me. All right? And this is important. And I feel the prophetic coming alive, so I'm going to flow with it. In ministry, in business, for our business owners, and in life, you really only want those who the Father has given you. Are oh, you hearing me up in here? That's the mode of ministry. That's the mode of business. Sometimes we overreach ourselves and we want everybody and want everybody to be with you. You want everybody to stay with you. Not everybody is for you. And people be upset. Sometimes you got to let people go, baby. Because you only want those that thou has given me. Oh, anybody hear me up in here? I, woo! Because if they're not for you, if they're not given by the Father, they're going to just hurt you. Come on, single woman. You don't want any kind of man. <laughs> you want the one that the Father has given you. Come on, single man. Come on, ministry leaders. Come on, churches. Amen. They got people that the Father put on earth for you. And that's what Jesus is saying. He don't want everybody. He want his certain allotment. His certain section, his certain group. The ones the Father has given him. Now, I'm going to use two phrases to describe this group of people. That the Father's given Jesus. Two phrases. They are the elect and the saved. All right? And it's not two groups, it's one group. Because the elect are saved. <laughs> and the saved are elect. Anybody hear me? <laughs> All right? And quickly, when we think about this phrase, the, the ones the Father have given me, that's the elect. All right? They, they're a group chosen by God. And Ephesians 1, 3 tells us that they're chosen and when they are chosen. It says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. How many people know you're chosen? Woo! You're chosen. Listen, Jesus said it best when he said in John 15, 16, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. If you're here this morning and you saved, hallelujah, you, listen, you, 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 you know the Lord. Guess what? You've been elected to know the Lord. You've been chosen to know the Lord. He had called you out of darkness. You ain't called him. He called you out of darkness into his marvelous life. You see, and that's what he means by that. You've been chosen in him before the foundation of the world. Verse 5, having predestinated us unto the adoption. What does a destiny mean, the place you're going to end up? Well, what does predestinated mean? It means before you was even here, he determined where you was going to end up. Anybody hear me up in here? Jesus said, give me the ones you've given me. That group, that chosen that elect. Another phrase to describe these, this group is not only the elect, but the saved. The saved. All right? The, the elect are those who understand our, our acronym SSS. All right? 
S, 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 the, the save understand that we all sinners. All right? That's what Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Anybody fell short of, of God's glory before? Anybody lied? Anybody cheated? Anybody stole? Anybody disobeyed their parents? Anybody done any of that before? The Bible says, for all are sinners and the elect, the saved, we understand that we sinners. But we also understand not only that we sinners, but that we are also separate because of our sin. The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, hallelujah, for the wages of sin is what? Is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Because of our sin, we've been separated from God. Look at Isaiah 59, 2, hallelujah. It says, hallelujah, it says right quick, it says, your sins, your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear you. So to be saved, you got to understand that we all sinners and that sin separates us from God. It actually produces death in our life that ends in an eternal damnation, an eternal death. All right. So we sinners, we separate, but the saved also understand that God sent us a savior. Somebody need a shout. Somebody need a shout. Hey. And that's the good news, that God so loved the world in our sin state, in our separate state, that he so loved the world that he gave. Who did he give? Who did he give? His only begotten son. Marshall, I see you up in that. Somebody excited for the son of God. He gave him. How did he give him? On the cross. How did he give him? Hallelujah. On the cross as a, as a sacrifice. Huh? Huh? That he gave his only begotten son as an atonement, as a propitiation for our sins. That whosoever does what? Believes in him. Not go do all the good works, but do what? But believe in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not, not, not fulfill all kind of religious things. Hallelujah. Climb mountains and, and burn incense. No, no, no. But what? But believe it in him. That's the key to salvation. Believe in. Should not perish but have everlasting life. Come on, give y'all some praise. So that's the save. We understand we sinners. We understand we separate, but we also understand that God sent us a savior. And that savior is, watch this word, he is the propitiation for our sins. That word means the satisfaction. See, when you sin against God, you owe God something. You owe God something. That's, why we, that's what we mean when the wages of sin is dead. You owe him death. But wouldn't that be awesome if somebody would come by and pay what you owe God on your behalf? Huh? Huh? To where the next time you see God, you don't owe him nothing. All your life, every morning you wake up, God say, you owe me something. And sometimes you dream about the fires and God is reminding you, you owe me something. But one day after you come to this altar, you give your life to Christ and you say, Lord, save me, a sinner. The next morning you wake up, God say, paid in full. You don't owe me nothing. The sin debt has been satisfied. Everything you said, everything you've done, everything you thought is under the blood. He is our what? Propitiation. Somebody shout for God's glory. Hallelujah. That's what we mean. He satisfied the wrath of God on our behalf. That's why the cross, it got dark at the cross when he was about to die. Because the wrath of God was on him. That's why he looked up. He said, Eli, Eli, lama sabatana. He said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Hallelujah. I'm forgiven because he was forsaken. Anybody hear me up in here, not just me. Raise your hand if you've been forgiven because he was forsaken. All right? He is our propitiation. 2 Corinthians 5, 9 says it so eloquently. For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The NLT says it like this. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin. 
so that we could be made right with God. Not through ourselves, not through the things we do, but that we could be made right with God. Through who? Through Christ Jesus. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. That's the gospel, my friends. That's the good news. And all we got to do, we understand we sinners, we understand we separate, we understand, hallelujah, you son of Savior. And all we got to do to be saved, and look, be praying right now, saints, because there's some who need to hear this, and the gospel is just exploding in their heart right now. All we have to do with this information that we're sinners, separate, and saved, what comes next is we just admit to God, I'm a sinner. We just believe in his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And then we just open our mouth and confess, calling upon him, saying, Lord, save me a sinner. And the Bible says, whosoever, whosoever, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. So when Jesus says, those you've given me, that's the group. The group that select, the group that saved. The elect will be saved, and all of the saved are elect. You see? You see, the saved have to be elect because John 6, 44 says, No man can come to me except the Father which had sent me draw him. You can't even come to Christ unless the Father choose you to come. Are you hearing me up in here? Don't make me get deep on you up in here. Because in our natural self, men prefer darkness instead of light. We prefer sin. We prefer the pleasures of sin for a season than the eternal bliss with the creator God. So before he call you and pull you out, you're blind, you're deaf. You can't come to him. You can't even hear him. He got to open your eyes. He got to open your ears. He got to soften your heart. The Holy Ghost got to begin to move on you. You ain't here this morning because you want to. You're here this morning because God wants you. Hey, anybody hear me up in here? Because no man can come to the Father except, come to Jesus except the Father draw him. So to save, have to be elect. But in John 6, 37, guess what? Hallelujah. The elect have to be saved. Because all that the Father give me shall come to me. Now this is too deep for some of y'all. But I'm going to go there anyway because that's what pastor believes. That's the foundation of who pastor is. That's what makes my theology strong. That's what helped me walk and be a good father. That's what helped me be a good husband. Because I know who I belong to. Ha! And I know that I've been belonging to him since a child, Bryce. Since a child, you've always been his. Since a child, crawling on your mom and daddy floor. Since a child, playing ball in the park. Since a child, hallelujah, in, at, at Holy Family School, growing up into uh, 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 teenage years, even when you was in that hospital bed when nobody was there with you in the darkness of eternity, God said, that's my child. Woo! You've always belonged to me. Woo! Come on, give God some praise up in here. Hey! And the ones chosen, the ones elected, it's going to be a matter of time. And you're going to run and you're going to do your thing and you're going to play and you're going to think that your chain is long, but it ain't that long. And when the father tired of your playing, he's going to grip that chain and say, come, my son. Ha. But now, all that the father giveth me shall come to me. And when they come, ha, when they come, I will in no wise cast a single one of them out. Come on, give him some praise up in here. Let's go back to his prayer in 24 and give it back to me in the NIV so we can understand it a little bit better now since we've had our first point. He says, Father, I want those you have given me. They are the elect. They are the saved. And only the elect will be saved. And all the saved will be elect. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. <laughs> this ain't for everybody. That's some deep theology, but I got I to gotta cook for everybody up in here. And so that's what we're doing. Let's move on to our second point. First lady about to run around church. 
Let's move to our second point. Be where I am. So he says in 24, he says, going back to the King James, for I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. See, Yahshua is praying here. He's sharing his desire, his will. He says, he says his prayer is that. He says, Father, I will. This is my desire. This is my prayer. That the elect, the saved, the people of God would be where? With me where I am. I have in my notes, what a statement of love. What a statement of love. You know, when you love somebody, you want to be with them. You know that? Yeah, yeah, you want to be with people that you love. And, and, and when you love them and you're with them, amen, you feel good on the inside. And when you're apart from them, it feels like something is missing. And Jesus is saying he loves us so much, he don't want to be apart from us. He said, I know I got to go to this cross and I know I got to die for their sins because it's the only way for them, hallelujah, to be saved. But let, when we finish our work, when I'm finished here and they finish there, oh, Father, please, I want them to be where I am. I want them there because I, I love them, you know, and it's a special thing. It's kind of like the love, and it's a, it's, it's, it's a lot of different things, but, but, but it, it's kind of like the love between a, a husband and a wife, a man and a woman, you know? I remember when me and First Lady Chantel, we were engaged. Huh? Hallelujah, my love. We got saved, and we was like, man, we need to get married. Because when you get saved, you want to please God. Anybody hear me up in here? All right? I know you passed the billboard that says shack up and help the environment. <laughs> Y'all saw that? <laughs> but thank God the environment is not our God. <laughs> our God is the most high. <laughs> and our God, they don't say shack up to, 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 to help with water conservation and CO2s. All right? Because that's not why it's getting hot. I told you before it's getting hot because hell is coming. Yeah. Anybody hear me up in here? That's the global warming. That's the El Nino. <laughs> All right, all right. So, 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 anyway, me and First Lady. And we, we want to do things right. And we young, hallelujah. Uh, uh, she and her, her, what, you, what? 18, 19 when we was engaged? Hallelujah. I'm in my, I'm in my early 20s. And we engaged and we want to do things right. Keeping everything pure, you know. And I, I move off and I go to, go to law school. And she's staying laughing yet. Woo, Lord. You know, when you love somebody, you miss them. And you think about them. You know? And you call them when you can. And it was kind of before all the days of cell phone and all that. We saying our age first, lady. Yeah. She said, you saying it. It was before all of that. All the widespread cell phone. So we'd have to wait till I got from law school. A whole day of law school. I'd be there from eight to about five, six. And I'd get home, man, and couldn't wait to get on the phone with her. You know? Just to hear her voice. And we talk, boy. And boy, look, our phone bill was high, man. <laughs> cool, you know how they used to charge you for that. Good Lord. My dad would be, y'all must be in love. <laughs> We'd have a whole week to wait. And sometimes I'd go up there, to come, come down here to laugh at Sometimes she'd come out there to Baton Rouge, and we couldn't wait for the weekend because we had loved each other. All right? And it's the same way with your kids. When they, they go off, you want to see them. Your grandkids, you want to see them. And it's just so good that Jesus would pray this because we get a peek in his love for us. I know we see the love at the cross. He said, greater love had no man than this than a man would lay down his life for his friends. But he could have just laid down his life and said, all right, y'all go about your business. I'm going to holler at y'all. He said, nah, I want them to be where I am. I want to be with them. I want them to see me. I want them to walk with me. Somebody give praise for the love of God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. 
He loves you. He loves you so much, he wants to be with you. And you got to take that with you. Because some people, amen, they don't like you. Sometimes even mamas and daddies. Sometimes even spouses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But always know that there's somebody out there who really wants your company, who wants to be with you. And that's Jesus. Come on, give him some praise up in here. Hallelujah. So, so, so he wants to be with us. Pastor, I get that. Where is he? Where is Christ? Christ is in heaven right now. He is. He's in heaven right now. And to be theologically sound, he's in heaven right now. And later on, he's going to still be in heaven, but heaven and earth are going to fuse together. It's called the new heaven and the new earth. Anybody hear me up here? All right. And so that's how it's going to look. So when Jesus says, I want them to be where I am, first off, hallelujah, that means to be in heaven with him. But in the end of days, in the eschatological time where, where, where the end comes, all right, when the, when the new heaven and the new earth merge, that new, new Jerusalem, he wants us to be there with him as well. All right. Pastor, how do you know that Jesus is in heaven right now? Well, he told us. In John 14, 1, look what he says. He says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. Anybody hear me up in here? See, when you love somebody, you not only want them with you, but you're going to prepare for them. See, mom, you're just not going to have a child, but you're going to begin to get ready for that child. You're going to be able to get that crib ready, that room ready, if you got a room, because sometimes in the struggle, you don't have a room for that child. Anybody grew up in the struggle? You make a place for them. Jesus said, Jesus said that ain't so. He said, he said well, the place I'm making for you is in a mansion. My father has many mansions. He says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, watch this, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Come on, give God some praise. Amen. We singing on this end, want to be where you are. Jesus echoing us on that end, got to be where you are. <laughs> Anybody hear me up in here? And I, I don't know about you, but a lot of times we can get so caught up on this side. We forget that this side is not really our home. We get so caught up in the houses, the cars, the clothes, so caught up in the money and the jobs, so get caught up in the, the travel and the vacations. And listen, I love all those things, and those things are nice. And guess what? I'm praying for you to have them. All right? But make one thing certain in your heart and in your life. Don't ever think that these things are permanent. And don't think that you belong here. <laughs> Enjoy them while you can, but don't let them be an anchor to you. You hold them, but don't let them hold you. Because when the bridegroom coming, anybody hear me up in here? Hey, you got to be ready to go. Your heart got to be tethered to him and not to this earth. You got to be able to leave that car, whatever it is. That Benz, that Bentley, that Cadillac, that Lincoln. You got to be able to leave that for Jesus. You got to be able to leave that two-story, three-story, four-story home with the elevator in it, with the bellman in it. You got to be ready to leave that for Jesus. You got to be ready to leave that business, Fortune 500, Forbes magazine, million, billion dollars. That's great. But you got to be ready to leave that for Jesus. All of your friends, you could be as famous and as popular as you could ever want to imagine. Facebook followers, YouTube subscribers, cameras wherever you go, people saying they know you. Is that Edward Montgomery right there? But you got to be ready to leave all of that for Jesus. Come on, give God some praise up in here. I feel like we've gotten too attached in these last few years, too attached to this world. Why, pastor? Well, you're getting blessed like the Bible prophesying you're going to be blessed. Black people doing all kinds of things they ain't never done. 
Black people flying, they swimming, they parachuting, they vacationing. We see them in Greece, we see them in Africa, we see them in Israel, we see them Negro, them ninjas everywhere. What's happening with these ninjas? Upward mobility is happening. The word of God is coming alive. You becoming the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, the lender, not the borrower. He is reestablishing his covenant with Israel. And you're doing things that your forefathers ain't never done before since the biblical days. But while we get all those things and while we receive all those blessings, never forget where your heart is supposed to be. Hey! Because <laughs> where your heart is, that's where your treasure going to be. And your treasure, store up treasure where? In heaven where moth or rust don't corrupt, where thieves can't break in and steal. You'll never be crushed, depressed, and broken on this side because your heart really not on this side. So the storms can come, the businesses can burn, the money and the economy can go up and down. It don't matter. My heart is in another place. My faith had found a resting place. I have an anchor for my soul. And if, oh, y'all ain't hearing me up in here. Where's your heart this morning? He's telling us, I want you to be with me. But he's here asking the question, do you really want to be with me? We sing it, I want to be where you are, got to be. But sometimes the words that come out of our mouth just coming out of our mouth and not our heart. I'm here to turn our hearts back home. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How do we know that Jesus in is in heaven? Well, he said it. He said it. He said, listen, I'm going to prepare. We not only know because he said it, but they saw him. Our, our predecessors, the apostles, they saw him. Luke 24, 50 says, and he led them out as far as Bethany after the crucifixion and resurrection. And he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into where? into heaven. We know he's in heaven because he said that's where he was going. We know he's in heaven because there was 12 witnesses, 11 besides Judas, and probably many more that saw him go up according to Paul. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. So they saw him go up. And a third party also saw him. Stephen saw him sitting at the right hand of the Father. In Acts 7, 56, and Stephen said right when they were stoning him, behold, I see the heavens open. And the Son of Man standing, where? At the right hand of God. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pastor, why you go through all that? Well, theologically, I don't want you to take my word. He says, I want you to be where I am. Well, where is he? He's in heaven. He's in heaven right now. And that's why he wants us to be. The early Hebrews, the early church, used to say what was called the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed, hallelujah, was a summation of our faith. And this was something that was done really before any type of real institutional denominational church. And this Apostles' Creed went like this. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And born of the Virgin Mary, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into the lower parts of hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended, where y'all? To heaven, where he is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. This is what was taught to be passed down to every disciple, every believer. In most denominations, most modern denominations, from Catholic to Baptist to Pentecostal, Presbyterian, all of them, uh, them accept this Apostles' Creed. Because this is what we believe, y'all. All right? I don't have the rest of it up there. It says, I believe in the Holy Spirit, it says. The Holy Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body. And I believe in life everlasting. Amen. 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 That is the Apostles Creed. That's a small summation of our faith. And part of that is we believe that Christ is in heaven. And Christ prays for us. He says, Father, I want them to be where I am. I want them to be in heaven with me now. And in the end, 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 I want them to be in the new Jerusalem, the new heaven, and the new earth. Just quickly, y'all, as we summarize point two, hallelujah, uh, you ask the question, you say, well, man, pastor, things are so nice down here. I'm so comfortable down here. Why would I want to be in heaven? <laughs> Why would I want to be in heaven? Won't I miss Earth if we get to leave Earth? <laughs> I want to tell you, friend, you ain't going to never miss Earth once we leave Earth. <laughs> Woo! We're going to talk a little bit about heaven. You ain't going to never miss Earth. As one preacher said like this, they said, man, if you're flying in a plane and the stewardess come and say, listen, we, we, we need to make some room here in coach, in commercial. Uh, we need to make some room in coach. But we got one first class ticket up here. We want to exchange your seat from commercial where it's tight. You know, they're making them seats tight now. And we want to put you in first class. Huh? Now, if it's a big flight, you can lay down in first class. They bring you food in first class. Huh? And they pick you up and they move you from, hallelujah. Now, listen, you, 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 you stuck back there. Look, close, close, close. And coach, and coach. And they pick you up back and they put you in first class. Old preacher say, you would never miss your seat in coach when you done got an upgrade to first class. Anybody hear me up in here? Hallelujah! What you saying, Pastor? You ain't gonna miss this earth once you get to heaven. You ain't gonna miss it. You never gonna miss it. Huh? That's like sitting in the nosebleed seats and they put you on the, on the first row. Huh? You up in here high-fiving LeBron and after he make a shot. How you gonna miss that when you high-fiving LeBron? How you gonna miss earth when you walk around heaven high-fiving the nail-scarred hands? Anybody hear me up in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You only gonna miss it now because you ain't seen what's coming. Once you see what's coming, listen, that's like missing your Volkswagen after you get you a Bentley. Anybody hear me up in here, Leah? You ain't gonna never miss that Ford Escort with the seatbelt when you started to put it in lock you in. You ain't gonna miss that. Now, while you're in your Ford Escort, you oh, I love you, I miss you. Even when I stop you, you keep running. But let them drop something more luxurious on you. Let them drop something better on you. Sure, you're going to miss your apartment. Sure, you're going to miss the projects. Huh? But let them put you in that, that three-story elevator, marble floors. Baby, you ain't going to even think about the projects. Baby, Holy Family is out of your mind. <laughs> Holy what? I ain't never lived there. <laughs> you only gonna go back there to minister, hey? <laughs> so why would you ever think that you gonna miss these little trinkets and glittering dust here on earth when the true treasure we gonna get when we go to heaven? Anybody hear me up in here? Jesus says, I want y'all to be where I'm at. Huh? And that's heaven. Pastor, what makes heaven so good? I'm glad you asked. Just right quick. Can we play a little while? Just right quick. Heaven is going to be so good because Christ will be there. Amen. Amen. Christ will be there. They had asked famous people, Miss Lou, they asked famous people, they say, they say, describe heaven for us. And famous people was going around describing heaven. They were doing their best describing heaven. And most of the famous people that describe heaven left God out. They never mentioned God. They never mentioned Jesus. They never mentioned the Holy Spirit. All right? That's like keeping the most important thing out. See, heaven is only heaven because God is there. Woo! Heaven is only heaven because Jesus is there. You say, man, well, well, what's so hot about God? Why is God so, what, what, what's going to be so special about God? Listen to me. Let me, let me give you a little, little logic right here. All right? Everything we enjoy on this side, God has made. <laughs> All that's good and perfect come from him. 
And if everything good and perfect come from him, then how good is he? Anybody hear me up in here? Hey, that's why I say in his presence is fullness of joy. Huh? In his presence is fullness of joy. Is life forevermore. You see, the beautiful thing about heaven is that God will be there. Christ will be there. And I don't know about y'all, but when I get there, Marshall, when I get there, and I see the one who saved my sin, sick soul, I see the one that pulled me out of darkness, I see the one who got me and kept me out of jail, out of hell, out of sick bed. Listen to me, y'all don't know, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Me and First Lady was just talking. She said, all your friends either locked up or dead. All the ones you grew up with that had a rough life. She said, look at you, what happened? And I just got to start shouting. I just got to start shouting. I just got to... I just got to start shouting. Why? Because it could have been me. You want to... It wasn't that I wasn't doing what they was doing. It wasn't that the hood wasn't in me. No, but I was chosen. I was predestined. I was redeemed. I was bought with a price. And when I, when I cross the threshold of those pearly gates, when I see him, mm, the songwriter said, I can only imagine. Hey, I can only imagine. That's what that song is all about. He said, he said surrounded by your glory. <laughs> What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in awe of you be still? Will I sing in your presence uh, to my knees? Will I fall? Will I sing? Hallelujah. Will I be able to speak at all? I could only imagine. You see, because I love him, y'all. What he's done for me, y'all. Listen. Where would you be without him this morning? So in glory, when you get there, all of that's going to come to your mind. Because you're going to have your memory in glory. You're going to have your emotions in glory. And you're going to know fully what he saved you from. You're going to be able to tell where you would have been without him. Huh? Listen, I have kids because of him. I got a solid marriage because of him. I got a home because of him. I got businesses because of him. I don't deserve none of that coming from VJ like I come from, fighting that MP boss like I was fighting. I'm up in there trying to give it to the Negro, look. Bad in school, bad. We shooting ball with Trey, Trey say, Pastor, you have been in a fight, been in a fight. Been in a fight. Lord, dang, you talking about this year or that? No, I'm just joking. I done lost more fights than them boys than Ben and Bryce. First day at JW Falk, you understand what I'm saying? That Mars John? Boy, took that them colors movies. Serious? We in Lafayette, y'all not no bloods and crips. But to save me from all of that. What's your story? What's your story? Is it the drugs, the alcohol? Is it the women? Is it the pills? Is it the streets? Is it the clubs? What's your story? What was your thing that would have killed you? Because what I need to tell you, he saved us not only from Satan, not only from the world, but he saved us from ourselves. I should have been dead and gone. I, I should have saved me from myself, dog. So when I see him, when I see, it's going to be a lot of great things about heaven, but, but when I see him, and not just that he just saved me, but he keep on keeping me. He, 
Come on, somebody. Even after salvation. So, so when I see him, Bryce, when I see him, I, that's why I try to give it all for him right now. Because when I see him, I want to take every crown, every jewel. I want to lay down and say, Lord, to you be the glory, the honor, the dominion. Ha! That's the heart of that song, for your glory. I will do Because he who has been forgiven much, loves much. Come on, give some, <laughs> my God, I, my God, so Christ will be there. That wasn't supposed to be that long, but I done broke a sweat on that point. He will be there. That's why you want to be in heaven. That's why this world, you ain't going to miss this world. Not only will Christ be there, but all of our loved ones that's going before us, in Christ Jesus, they gonna be there too. All right, I got a daddy that I'm ready to see. Not ready right now, but I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be ready when I, when you ready. You understand? Cause I got work to do out here. You know what I'm saying? I'm ready yet, God. We need a worldwide revival. <laughs> but on your time, man. <laughs> but we got loved ones up there. I got a brother up there. We got aunts, we got uncles up there that went before us. And heaven is going to be great because we're going to get to see him. And we're going to see him without the prosthetics, without the wheelchairs, without the blindness, without the hearing aids, without the deafness, without the diabetes, without the dialysis, without the cancers, without the leukemia, without the bad joints, without, hallelujah, without everything. We're going to see him in his glory, y'all. And they redeem self. And they redeem state. And I don't know about you, but after I hug on Jesus, I got some other people that I want to run around and hug. Anybody hear me up in here? Never would have made it without you. <laughs> you know? And they got some mamas up in, up in heaven that's happy as they look down and see y'all in here. They got some mama saying, nah, hallelujah, some, some, some daddies, some grandparents smiling and saying, Jesus, they told me that boy wasn't going to make it. Look at him down there worshiping. Look at him down there in the word. <laughs> Look at him down there saved and redeemed. No, not perfect, but pressing. Look at him. Look at him in that church. And they're going to be happy when we get up there. They're going to hit us and dap us up, hug us with tears in their eyes. And say, I prayed for you, and I knew that God had something special for you. Hey, we got some loved ones. We got some loved ones, and I got scriptures. Thessalonians say he's going to bring them back. Come on, listen, listen, listen. Go to 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, and you'll see everything that I'm saying is true. He's bringing all our loved ones back when he returns. Why is heaven good? Huh? Christ will be there. All our loved ones will be there. And guess what? No problems. No problems. No problems. Hallelujah. Let me keep preaching for a second. Revelation 21, 3 says this. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Jesus is the tabernacle of God. He's the tent of the most high God. He's the house, hallelujah, residence of God because in him dwelleth the Godhead bodily, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And what he's saying is that in the last days, God is going to be with men walking amongst us. He will dwell with them and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And this is the good part, verse four. And God shall wipe away all tears. <laughs> From their eyes. <laughs> it won't be nothing to cry about no more in heaven. Anybody hear me up in here? Nothing to cry about. I don't know what you cry about on this side. But Jesus is saying he's going to wipe that all away. Some of y'all been crying about them children. He's going to wipe that all away. Huh? Huh? Look what he says. He says he's going to wipe every tear out of their eyes. He said there shall be no more death. Oh God, I could go on and on for that. Why, Pastor. All the things that cause death will be no more in heaven. All the things that cause death. 
What causes death, Pastor, the bright, that brings tears to our eyes? Old age causes, causes death. Old age will be gone. We'll live forever in eternity. Huh? Sickness and disease cause death. Huh? Pande pandemics, heart disease, diabetes, all of that will be gone in heaven. You talk about you're going to miss this place? Full of sin and sickness? Full of disease? When you get up there and there's no hospitals up there because ain't nobody sick up there, you're going to say, first class coach. That's what you're going to say. You see what I'm saying? None of the things that cause death will be up there in glory. Ain't no COVID-19 up there in glory. Ain't no car accidents in glory. Ain't no drunk drivers taking our loved ones out like that in glory. Ain't no home invasions in glory. Ain't no robins and jackins in glory. Ain't no drugs in glory. There's no drug dealers or drug users in glory. Therefore, there's no shootouts, no gangs, no teen violence in glory. Everything that causes death and murder and suicide in any kind of way has been abolished. Jesus says, I make all things new. Anybody hear me up in here? Oh, death, oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? For death is swallowed up. Somebody need to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. He said, why heaven is good? There's no more death. There's no more funerals. There's no more funeral homes. I love Syrah, but Syrah gonna have to close up and start another business in glory. So will Kinchin and the other one in Wine Alley. What's their name? Yeah, that one. They going it's over with. It's over with. No hospitals, no hospice, no heat waves, no tornadoes, no hurricanes, no earthquakes, no floods, no people starving around the world while we watching our TV and seeing them with flies on it. But there's none of that no more in glory. He tells us, hallelujah, death will be done away with. Neither sorrow, and that's grief, because death is gone, there's no more mourning. No more mourning for loss of any kind. He says, I got to keep going. He says, neither shall there be any pain. Reason no, there's no need for pain killers is because in heaven, there's no pain. Not only physical pain, but soul pain. Heart pain. Can I ask you a question? What causes you pain? What hurts your heart? Think about that right now. What hurts your heart or what, what, what in the past hurt you or what you're afraid in the future going to hurt you? Well, all of that won't be in heaven. Come on, give God some praise up in here. Hallelujah. Listen, it's no more divorce. It's no more cheating and betrayal. It's no, no jail and our children locked up and we can't see them. There's no molestation, no abuse, no rape. There's no type of injuries, no handicaps, no deformities. All that's gone, all that's swallowed up. And you say you want to stay here. Well, I'm going to write you. Because <laughs> heaven is my home. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. Hallelujah. Why is heaven awesome and where the saints want to be? We should want to be there. Christ is there. Our loved ones are there. There's no problems up there. I got to go. I got to go, Darius. I know you're enjoying this, Darius. Being a preacher, teacher, you are, but we got to continue. I'm going to give you some quick, cool facts about heaven, and then we're going to leave. Y'all ready? Here's for our youngsters. Other cool facts about heaven. All right? Uh, uh, creation will be fully restored the way it was supposed to be. Heaven will be like the Garden of Eden. Anybody hear me up in here? And the work is going to be different. It won't be by the toil and sweat of your brow. All right? You say, Pastor, we going to work in heaven? Yeah, we going to have a little work to do. Part of our work going to be worship, which ain't work at all. Anybody hear me up in here? But there's some other things in heaven because it's a kingdom. 
And God said, I'm going to make rulers of 10 cities and 20 cities. You're going to have responsibilities. But everything going to be perfect. Everything going to be great. Pastor, what else about heaven? There's going to be rewards given in heaven. Amen. How you do on earth going to determine what you receive in heaven. Yes, Whether you're about your father's business. You remember how we was calling that second generation? Come on, show up. Come on, get to work. Don't wait for us to go work with us. We're stronger together. We need generations on the side of each other. One generation shall praise God and the other generation echo. That's what God wants. But not only do we implore them to serve just to serve because it's going to be their best life here. He's going to give you your best life here when you serve him. Your best life here is serving him. But when you get to glory, you're going to be rewarded for serving him. The crown of life will be given. The crown of righteousness is going to be given. Crowns for suffering. Crowns in glory for being a soul winner. That's one of our scriptures for the whole church. He that winneth souls is wise. And those that turn many to righteousness, Daniel say, will shine like the stars of heaven, the Bible says. They'll be given glory. You think we out there in Macomb and Vise for nothing? We out there for the souls of men. And every soul that's won is a crown, a jewel in your crown. You get glory for being out there. You get rewards for being out there. You ain't just going out there for free. God has an account in heaven. And you're storing up treasure, not on earth, not with Chase Bank, not with Wells Fargo, not with, I was about to say Tesh, but now it's um, First Horizon. It's the first bank of heaven you're storing up with. There's going to be rewards in heaven. Not only that, just some quick facts. Come on, y'all not sleeping yet, huh? Okay, I went over. We won't miss our old lives. I just won't say that again. We won't become angels. Angels are angels and we people. All right? The believers are not angels. And we do that when people die, we say they are angel now. And that sounds good, yeah, but we not no angels. The Bible says because of Christ in us, the hope of glory. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, I think that kind of burns Satan up a little bit. Because we was made lower than the angels. But because of that gospel and the spirit of God in us and him dying on that cross, when we get saved, we get promoted. Anybody hear me up in here? I don't want to. I'm not trying to brag because they, they help us. So I'm just giving you all the facts. The Bible say that we going to judge angels. We're going to say, I told you there's going to be some work to do. We're going to sit and we're going to judge angels. They're the servants, the ministers to the heirs of salvation. When you know your Bible, we don't, don't say we become angels. No, no, no. We are the sons and daughters of God. Anybody hear me up in here? All right. All right. That's in Christos. All right. I already told you in heaven, we're going to have our memory and emotions. We will recognize one another. I'll be up in there and say, Brother Carl, that's you? Brother Carl, that afro look good on you in glory, Brother Carl. My God, I'm going to say, Elmo, that's you, Elmo? Playing pickleball up there like your arms don't hurt no more. Grant, that's you? Oh, Grant. Hey, man, ain't got nothing on you up there, Grant. I'm going to say, first lady. Girl, you're lucky we can't marry no more. I'll marry you again, God. <laughs> Big brother! Got them locks looking good, Big brother. <laughs> Marcus, we gonna recognize each other. We gonna see each other. You know? We gonna see each other in glory. Could you imagine that, Bryce? Huh? How that turnaround jumper gonna be in glory? Huh, Kent? How we gonna be in glory? How Monique could say, and we gonna eat up there, so I'm gonna be expecting some good, some good food. Yeah, we gonna eat up there in, in glory. He said, Pastor, you making up stuff. We not gonna eat in heaven. 
You ever heard of the marriage supper of the Lamb? Anybody know their Bible? When we first get that link and we go have a break bread feast with the lamb there, sitting at the table. Boy, that's going to be a long table. And I'm going to be down there rolling way at the end of the table. Hi, Jesus. <laughs> My God. I'm telling you, listen, we're going to all be out there. Kim, Brian, I'm going to finally have a voice that could sing. Hey, God, Chris, I'm going to be hitting them notes with you. You know, we're going to see each other, boy. We're going to recognize each other. And I have here, the, uh, uh, theologians always tell me to tell the people of God this. Remember, don't buy none of the lies of Satan. We will never be bored in heaven. Anybody hear me up in there? Because that's what... That's the new things that witches and witches and warlocks and, and they putting out Luciferians. You don't want to go to heaven. It's boring. Boring. Gee, boring. I ain't got no bills calling me. You understand what I'm saying? I can, I can walk around heaven all day. I got a mansion. And when I walk on my street, it's streets of gold. And when I walk out the gates, it's gates of pearl. Oh, God. And so, what? oh, God. Boring. Boring. Maybe we've been in slavery 400 years. I'm ready for a rest. Anybody? Boring. That's people that ain't picked cotton in their DNA. You understand what I'm saying? So don't buy that. Heaven is where we want to be. Come on, give y'all some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's finish off with our third point, behold my glory. And so we're talking about Jesus' prayer. And we see that Jesus prays. He said, man, listen, I'm, I'm telling you, I want y'all to be where I'm at. He says in our in first point, the ones you've given me, that's the elect, that's the saved. And at the end of the service, we're going to make sure you're in that number. Two, be where I am. Three, he says, I want them to behold my glory. Let's go back to verse 24 and 17. He says, Father... I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. That word glory. Somebody say glory. glory. Hey, God. That word glory is doxa in the Greek. Doxa. And the Greek word doxa means splendor, brightness magnificence, majesty. And Jesus is saying right here in his prayer, oh, Father, I do want them to be with me, but I also want them to see my glory, my splendor, my brightness, my magnificence, and my majesty. Here, Jesus is talking about his eternal glory, all right? And his eternal glory is something that we have never seen, all right? We've never seen it, all right? And Jesus prays about, he talks about his eternal glory early on in the prayer, John 17, 5, watch this. He says, and now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. That's his eternal glory. Now, it's important. You got to understand some things about his eternal glory. His eternal glory is a shared glory. It's a glory that he shares with the Father and the Holy Spirit. There is a glory of the Godhead in heaven. Woo! It's an eternal glory. And that throne that they sit on, Jesus on the right, the Holy Ghost on the left. There's a brilliance, a brightness, a magnificence. There's a splendor that's there. His eternal glory. The eternal glory is not only shared, it is a glory that existed before creation. It is a glory that was before the world was. And that's what Jesus is saying. Give me back my glory. The glory I shared with you before the world was. The glory that I took off, hallelujah, to enter creation. The glory that I took off 
to go and save the lost sons and daughters of Adam and Eve. The glory that I laid aside, he considered it not robbery, hallelujah, to be equal to God, but humbled himself and humbled himself to a point of a servant and became obedient unto death. Anybody know Philippians up in here? He took off his glory. That's the humiliation of Christ. You know, he left majesty in splendor to come down here. And we've never seen his eternal glory. We've never seen it. We've never seen it. You say, Pastor, what you, what you, what you? So why is he saying, Lord, I want him to be with me, but I also want him to see my glory. Let me try to break it down with a very, very, hallelujah, very rudimentary example. You know, as we get older and our kids, they get older and they, they see what we could do now. They see us run now. They see us jump now. They see how we get dressed up and look kind of good now. And, and, and they say, oh, mama, you fast. You could jump. You could run. Mama, you look good. And you look at them and you just kind of smile. You say, baby, <laughs> you should have seen me back in the day. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Because if you think I'm something now, <laughs> if you would have seen me, Back then, come on, Miss Mary, talk about it, prayer warrior. Tell them, you know you won't say to Miss Lou, talk about it. I know y'all pray heaven down, but don't you act like y'all was in something. Listen. Glory. And for the men, hallelujah, you, 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 you think I was bad on that court now? You think I could jump now? I could shoot now, I could run now. You think I'm fast now? You should have seen me in my glory days. You should have seen my glory. Jesus is saying, y'all think I'm something now? You think me raising the dead now? Walking on water now? Transfigured on the Mount of Transfiguration now? You see me feeding the 5,000 now? You think that's something now? Wait till you see my glory. Come on, John. Come on, John. That's what I'm saying. That's what Jesus is saying. He said, y'all ain't seen nothing. Y'all ain't seen nothing. He said, Father, please, please. I don't only want them to be where I'm at. I want them to see me in my glory. I want them to see me seated at your right hand. I want them to see the splendor, the majesty, the cherubim and seraphim saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, angels running back and forth, creation doing his will. Show them the glory that we shared before the world was. You see, on earth, y'all, we hadn't seen his glory. We saw a glimpse of something, but on earth, listen, that wasn't his. On earth, he was a man of sorrows. On earth, he was acquainted with grief. On earth, he was despised and rejected. He came to his own and his own received him not. On earth, he was spit on. On earth, he was crucified, numbered among transgressors, thieves, and robbers. On earth, they say, give us Caesar. Ha, we have no king but Caesar. On earth, they say, give us Barabbas. We ain't seen his glory here on earth. See, he's the darling of heaven, y'all. He's the bright morning star in heaven, y'all. When he passed by in heaven, the angels curtsy. Anybody him in heaven? We ain't seen his glory yet. You see? On earth, he took upon himself the form of a servant and made himself of no reputation, a humble carpenter. We ain't seen who Christ really is yet, yo. See, he came like a lamb the first time. But when he come back, he come in like a lion. Anybody hit me up in here? You say, Lord. I want him to see my glory, my majesty, my magnificence, my splendor, and my brightness. Listen, we on our way down. We on our way down. Some say, Pastor, no, you wrong. They saw his glory on that mountain, a mountain of transfiguration. But like one theologian say, listen, 
the transfiguration glory, put that up there. I got a little thing. The transfiguration glory was like seeing a ray of light coming through the peephole of a door. You thought the transfiguration was something? They was up in there hiding the light. They thought that that's you ever saw. Give me a picture. You ever saw a, a little ray of light come through a people? That's what they got excited about. <laughs> huh? Huh? That's what they got excited about. Huh? That's like seeing you playing basketball in your forties and your fifties, Tyrone. They ain't never saw your glory, baby. Anybody hit me up in here? They, Woo! Huh? Huh? But seeing the transfiguration was a ray of sun through the people over the door. But when we get to heaven and see his full glory, it's going to be like opening the door and seeing the bright sun compared to that. The full sun compared to that. We're going to say, God, we really didn't know who he was. We really didn't. He said, Lord, I want him to be with me. And I want him to see my glory now. Hallelujah, musicians, y'all can please come help me. Just, just walk slowly, walk slowly. I'm having so much fun with this message, just walk slowly, just, you know, you know. And every now and then throughout history and throughout the Bible, he gave us peaks, snapshots, rays of his glory. But all of that, y'all, just like transfiguration, was just him showing us his back. That's all that was. Moses saw his back came out shining for a week. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> boy, you only saw my birthmark on my back, boy. You ain't seen. But good thing he don't show all his glory to us now. Because our bodies now can't take the full glory of God. You know your Bible, huh? The Bible says in Exodus 33, 20, he says, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me fully and live. That's how powerful he is. That's how his glory is. You know your Bible. You know your Bible. When Isaiah saw him in Isaiah 6, Isaiah, it was a vision. Isaiah wasn't even in the physical and thought he was going to die. See, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. His glory filled the temple and the earth. He said, and then woe is me. I'm a man undone. I'm falling apart. My DNA is unraveling. I'm coming apart because of the glory. See, in order for us to see Christ, to see the Godhead at, at his full capacity, the full glory, something has to change in us. He got to change us first before we see the full glory. And in heaven, to wind down, we are going to be changed. We are going to be changed. You know the scripture, Philippians 3.21, who will transform our lowly bodies that it may be conformed to his glorious body. Look at your neighbor and say, you got a new body coming. <laughs> and that new body with those eyes and everything else will be able to handle the eternal glory of God. And John says it, in 1 John 3, 2, he says, Beloved, now are we the children of God. And it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. Watch this. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall one, we shall be like him. He's going to make us just like him, his glorious body. And that is the only way, too, we shall be able to see him as he is. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. <laughs> Hallelujah! My God, my God. So we've talked about a lot this morning, and we've talked about heaven. And we've talked about the fact that Jesus prays. He says, Father, I pray. I pray that, that the ones you've given me, that they could be with me where I am, that they can see my my glory. In the end of the verse, he said, Father, do all this because, because you love me from before the foundation of the world. There are some others in here who he's loved before the foundation of the world. And you've been running. 
and you've been running. But you can't run away from who you are. You've been chosen. You've been elected. You are his child. And today we're going to make your calling and election sure. You was in here for the first part and you say, Pastor, I really want to be saved. I, I heard you, sinner, separate, savior. I'm ready to admit, believe, and confess. Because at the end of the day, I, I don't want to be in this God-forsaken place with sickness, disease, and heartache. I want to be where you are, God. And if one day when you close your eyes, you want heaven. At this altar, we're giving away boarding passes. Anybody hear me up in here? So if you're not sure, amen, come on up and we're going to make sure you get your ticket. Because I want to tell you, he's coming back, y'all. He's coming back. And you want to be ready. You want to be where he is and not the other place. This message is also for believers. You already say, but... You done got a little tied up with the things of this life. They're called possessions. But they're not supposed to possess you. You're supposed to possess them. So you may need to come up and talk with your God a little bit about making sure that your heart is in the right place this morning. That heaven is your home. Ushers, if you can quietly, without breaking the atmosphere, come and open the gates. Come and open the gates. And as they open the gates, the spiritual doors of the house of God are opening. If you want salvation or if you want to talk with God about some things you've been doing, saying, thinking, you can approach the altar now. Come, 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 come. Take your time, but come. Don't disturb the atmosphere, but come. Come, come, come. Heaven is rejoicing. Come, come. Heaven is rejoicing. Come, come. Woo! I want to see you, Jesus. His eternal glory, His majesty, hallelujah, that's what it's all about y'all, I will do it. My God. That's my heart. That's my heart. Wanna be where you are. Is that anybody's prayer in this place? Wanna be where. When it's all over, I don't wanna be down here. I don't wanna be in Shell. Ooh, I got. 
gotta be, hey, wanna be, gotta be, wanna be, hey, wanna, wanna, I wanna be where you are, hallelujah, hey, gotta be where you are, Jesus, wanna be where you are, Jesus, gotta be where you are, come on, just a little bit. I think you're ready to pray with me. We're going to pray. And just mean it from your heart. Say, Most High God, I want to be where you are. I got to be there. This world is not my home. All the pain, all the, pain. All, the all the tears, all the suffering. All the I, don't I don't want it. So I admit, I admit I'm, not I'm not perfect, but I believe, but I believe that you died for my sins. You, sins. you were buried, you were buried. And, on and on the third day, you rose. I understand, I understand that I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. that my sin separated, separated me. But I believe with all my heart, all my heart. that you sent me a savior in Yahshua, in, in Jesus. So save me, save me. forgive me, forgive cleanse me, me. and use me for your, for your glory. Put me to work, me to work. In, your in your kingdom. Help me to serve you now, me serve you now. So, I so I can worship and serve you later. Serve you later. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus mighty Come on, give him some praise up in this place. Hey.